What is consciousness? How can we define it? How can we tell if something is conscious? Does consciousness depend on this jelly that is within our skulls? To study and investigate this question, we are going to analyze whether a cockroach, everyone's favorite insect, is conscious. The reason why I'm picking a cockroach to guide our inquiry into what consciousness might be and how can we detect it is because since it's summer, there have been a lot of cockroaches roaming around and also because we tend to only assume that consciousness lies in beings that act similar to the way we do. So we tend to define or believe that consciousness is represented normally in things that resemble human form or act closely to humans. So for example, when we look at a mammal, we tend to immediately assume that there is some consciousness implicated there. But when we look at insects, there is more of this tendency to look at them as if they have no consciousness and they're just these silly automatons that have erratic and random behaviors. So this is why we are going to get to the bottom of the question of whether a cockroach is conscious or not. But before we move on to our cockroach investigation, we must first define our terminology. So what is consciousness? Researchers have differing opinions on how to define consciousness, but I think one definition that I really enjoy and find very applicable is the one that David Chalmers wrote in his book, The Conscious Mind in Search of a Fundamental Theory. The subject matter, being consciousness, is perhaps best characterized as the subjective quality of experience. When we perceive, think, and act, there is a way of causation information processing, but this processing does not usually go on in the dark. There is also an internal aspect. There is something it feels like to be a cognitive agent. This internal aspect is conscious experience. Conscious experiences range from vivid color sensations to experiences of the faintest background aromas, from hard-edged pains to the elusive experience of thoughts on the tip of one's tongue. Chalmers continues to characterize what consciousness is, but I believe that this piece defines consciousness in its most important way and most relevant manner. So if we go back to la cucaracha, what essentially this means is that if a cockroach is conscious, then there is something that it is like to be that cockroach. That cockroach has some form of subjective experience. Now that we define consciousness at the level of phenomenology, we must also grapple the challenge of defining consciousness as a neurobiological phenomena. And this is where things get really tricky. For one, we have very good reasons to believe that conscious is generated by the brain. We assume this because when we damage the brain in some way or another, we cause changes to subjective experience. That being said, the project of reducing consciousness to simply one brain region has failed, meaning that the idea of reductionism when it comes to consciousness is probably not feasible. Instead, it seems likely that consciousness arises from the information processing that happens when various brain regions and neural circuits communicate with one another. In the middle of this, I think it is interesting to say that we perceive and interact with the world through our consciousness, but we seem to know a lot more about the world than we know about consciousness itself. Invoking David Chalmers again, this brings us to the hard problem of consciousness, which is, why does it exist, what does it do, and how does it emerge? And essentially, what is its purpose? For example, we know that a lot of our actions are a product of unconscious processing, meaning that we live in this sort of deterministic reality where the factors and reasons for our behavior can be found beneath the layer of consciousness or in the environment, meaning that we have this illusion of control and agency over our actions. So when I say I chose to buy a PSP instead of a Nintendo, I might have this impression that my choice is purely of my own agency but in reality, a variety of factors that are completely out of my control determined my decision. So this raises the question, if all of these things seem to be happening beneath the layer of conscious experience, then what is the evolutionary advantage of being conscious? Okay, so one of the apparent purposes for consciousness is the ability to distinguish self from others and anticipate the consequences of one's own actions. Another proposed evolutionary role of consciousness is to prepare for future contingencies. Some also argue that the role of consciousness in decision making is to intervene when our automatic and unconscious systems fail to make the right decisions and therefore there needs to be some conscious intervention. Keep in mind that everything that I'm saying here is heavily debated. When it comes to neural correlates of consciousness, there's also a lot of different research 
but still a lot to find out. It seems that we cannot pinpoint consciousness to just one brain region. Consciousness seems to involve large-scale synchronized activity spreading from various systems, such as the sensory to frontal parietal networks. Thalamocortical structures also seem to be very important regions for conscious experience. That being said, brain regions such as the cerebellum or the primary visual cortex don't seem to be significant agents in producing consciousness. So in some sense, we can build this proto-hierarchy where we can look at brain structures and regions and rank them according to their relevance and significance in producing consciousness. But my main point here is that consciousness doesn't seem to be reducible. It is a product of this interplay between different systems in the brain. To address the question of how conscious is something? So by this question, we are assuming that there are gradations to the level of consciousness that something can have. There are theories such as integrated information theory, which basically uses this parameter phi to use to quantify how much consciousness something has. The way this is calculated is very complex. And if you want, I can do a video just dedicated to that. But on a very superficial level, these techniques try to assess the synchronicity between brain regions through their brainwave patterns, thereby trying to understand how the strength, synchrony, and persistence of neural oscillations may contribute to producing consciousness. Regardless of these techniques, we cannot actually inhabit the thing we are trying to assess consciousness in. For example, I can look at you and you behave similar to me. You exhibit human characteristics. I know that I'm conscious and you seem conscious because when I look at you, you look like me. But I can't really know what it's like to be you. I can't see the world through your eyes. It could be the case that you are simply simulating consciousness, kind of like a philosophical zombie. So as you can see, the question of consciousness is interdisciplinary, and there is still a very strong philosophical component. Okay, so if we are to assess whether a cockroach is conscious, we really only have two ways of doing so. We can look at its neurological complexity, look at its nervous system and try to see how similar it is to other animals or beings that we are pretty sure are conscious, or we can look at its behavior and, and try to infer if there is some spark of consciousness there. So for example, is a cockroach avoiding pain? How does it respond to the environment? Is it able to differentiate itself from the rest of its environment? So maybe having a proto sense of self. These are very tricky questions, but let's try and explore this a little bit. So a cockroach has around 1 million neurons, so far less than the human brain, but it's also much smaller than the human. Through this nervous system, cockroaches are able to effectively navigate their terrain and to the frustration of humans become extremely elusive. They are also highly adaptable and resilient. Cockroaches, just like other insects, have something called the central complex, which seems to play an important role in locomotion and in helping insects merge external and internal signals into goal-directed behavior. Cockroaches also use information from their antennas in escape behavior. They also use visual and olfactory cues to aid their navigation when returning to their shelter. Cockroaches, just like other insects, don't have a brain in a traditional sense. They have ganglia, basically bundles of nerves in highly concentrated areas. And unlike humans, cockroaches have a decentralized nervous system that is composed by these previously mentioned ganglia, clusters of nerve cells that are located throughout their body. So this is why you can see cockroaches still surviving sometimes, even when their head has been chopped off. They won't survive for a long time, but they can still have some movement and control over basic functions such as breathing. For those of you in the field of neuroscience, this is not going to be surprising, but for the rest, you should know that cockroaches also operate through glutamate, GABA, and many of the same neurotransmitters that we humans do. Basically all of the same biogenic amines. So if you were to administer in some way a SSRI to these cockroaches, you would likely see alterations in their behavior. Okay, so outside of this, when trying to assess consciousness, we tend to look at the social behaviors of animals. When we look at an insect, such as a cockroach, we have reports detailing that when you isolate the cockroach from other roaches, they may develop behavioral disorders. So cockroaches, just like us, seem to benefit from living in groups. This kind of makes sense, right? Because when you find one cockroach in your home, there's a big chance that there's also a lot of them behind the fridge. 
Some even argue that cockroaches have similar cognitive capacities as honeybees. So this is in terms of their learning capabilities and also communication. So all of this being said, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on whether a cockroach is conscious, because that's the only thing that I can give you, as there are no objective methods to actually know whether something is conscious, even other humans, so I'll do my best. At a behavioral level, cockroaches try to escape us, they avoid pain, they seek food, they have complex social lives, in the sense that they prefer to live in communities with other roaches, it is very hard to understand whether they actually have a sense of self because their constitution and mannerisms are just so different from human traits. This is why it's so easy to smash and kill insects without having any sort of moral remorse. They do seem to have spatial memory and capacity to learn. Do they have distinct personalities? So if you look at a colony of roaches, could you say that some act in ways that are different to others? That's a little bit hard to assess because at least through my eyes they all seem gross and I just want to run away so I never really get an opportunity to observe their behavior too much. But it is entirely possible that they do have some sensory experience and they are not just zombies. Where there is an input-output function without any conscious processing or awareness of the processing of such information. Here I must mention a study that was done at the Free University of Brussels where scientists measured the amount of time that cockroaches spent inside a given area, basically trying to assess their proclivity to explore rather than just be hiding. And they found differences when they put these roaches in an open area. Some would explore, while others, the shy roaches, would just go back to their shelter. So I guess not all cockroaches are alike. Does variability in behavior within a species indicate that there is some sort of consciousness that makes each one of these beings unique? Well, I don't know, maybe. It could be an indication. But it is, of course, not sufficient for us to claim that something is conscious or even understand the level of consciousness that is there. In terms of nervous system complexity, a cockroach is, of course, less complex than a human being or when compared to most mammalian brains. But it isn't obvious whether nervous system complexity is actually a requirement for consciousness. It could just be that if you put these different pieces in the right place, if you structure a physical system in a certain order or arrangement, then that will produce consciousness. So you don't really need to get that complex. In my opinion, I believe that cockroaches have some degree of sentience. It's probably something very different than human consciousness because our experience of consciousness is highly embedded in linguistic frameworks. And my assumption is that cockroaches don't have the poetic nature that humans do, but it seems entirely possible that cockroaches are not zombies. Sorry for not giving you a lot of insight about whether cockroaches are conscious, but the goal of this video was to show you how complex it is to actually study consciousness and how many questions we can derive from it. That being said, I'm highly interested in knowing what is your opinion regarding cockroaches and other insects. Are they actually conscious? And let me know if you think whether one day we will be able to develop a conscious-ometer that will allow us to understand how conscious something is. Thank you.